Hello, and welcome to the Pharmacy Informatics Professor 2020 with your host, Dr. Armin Simonian. Today, we're privileged to have one of the pioneers of pharmacy informatics, Dr. Tony Dow, with us to talk about his career path in pharmacy informatics. Now, obviously, Dr. Dow was not around back in the 1970s when pharmacy informatics was first getting started, but I call him a modern-day pioneer because um, he's really been devoted to pharmacy informatics from the time of graduation from pharmacy school, and he has been a pioneer in using social media and leveraging social media to spread the word about pharmacy informatics and provide education in this area. Uh, online. So um, I wanted to invite him today to talk about his career path and touch on the stuff that he's done with social media, which has been really a positive for the specialty practice of pharmacy informatics. So Dr. Dow, I will hand the microphone over to you and you can tell our listeners about your uh, career path in pharmacy informatics. Sure. Uh, thank you for inviting me to be on your, uh, your show, your YouTube ch channel. Uh, it's really an honor because I've actually looked up to you seeing the articles you've written as I was starting in informatics as well. So it's really an honor for me to uh, be here and kind of just talk about like, I guess, my career path. And um, I guess just kind of back up, like when I was a student in pharmacy school, I mean, I knew that, you know, pharmacy, I, I'm already in pharmacy school. I was going to be set on, you know, going to residency, doing clinical pharmacy, things like that. Um, and if that wasn't the case, then I really only knew the other thing was to go to retail and, you know, do a graveyard shift of seven on, seven off, something like that, right? Um, and as I was navigating through pharmacy school, I, I found out kind of like later in my third year or fourth year or so, uh, closer to the end of my third year, that there was a field called pharmacy informatics. And it wasn't something that was taught in school at the time. So I was class of 2012 and they didn't really have any kind of... Um, uh, lessons or any kind of like lectures, guest lectures, anything like that on pharmacy informatics. So it was just a lot of like, oh, this sounds cool. Uh, I'm going to go Google this and then see what I can find. Um, and at the time, there wasn't a lot of information out there about pharmacy informatics, but I did what I could. I looked at ASHP. I joined the section of uh, pharmacy informatics and technology, all those kind of things, trying to learn like as much as I could about that field. I also looked into, you know, um, I guess to back up too is that I'm always been like a techie kind of person. Growing up, I love using, you know, figuring out things on the computer. I was like a website builder for our, our school pharmacy, like, you know, all those kind of things. So uh, I knew that even though my clinical knowledge is not the best, if I marry that with a form of technology, I can, I could provide the better, uh, best impact that I could with my skill set. So finding out about pharmacy informatics as a, as a thing made me really want to pursue it. So, um, so yeah, I did all the research, I joined ASHP, uh, and I didn't really have a lot of mentors at the time. I mean, some of the people I did get to talk to in the very beginning was uh, Dr. Maritza Liu uh, and, um, and Dr. Carl Gumper. They were kind of like a big, big uh, influencers into like how I wanted to pursue my career. Uh, so just knowing a little bit more about that <clears throat> and then also making it aware to my professors that that was something I really wanted to do. Putting that awareness around, it kind of helped me get to where I am um, today. So, you know, I, I did apply for residency because I found that, you know, to do pharmacy informatics, there were a handful of residencies that were PGY2 programs, um, but you have to get PGY1 first. So I didn't get matched for residency. However, because I did have that, um, you know, presence of like letting all my professors know that that's what I wanted to do. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> and, um, and I did a lot of projects during my appies where it's like, if they give me a project, I would try to like do it in a technologically, uh, you know, type of way where instead of just like a PowerPoint presentation on educating providers how to write prescriptions, I made it like an interactive module that gave them a certificate at the end, stuff like that. Uh, it, it became like something that they remembered me by. So by the time I graduated, uh, I guess there was a position open up in uh, one of the county locations um, outside of this county. And it was like a, a Ventura County. It was like 100 miles away from where I live right now. And they were looking to have uh, someone help with their EMR conversion. So they were going from Meditech to Cerner. Um, <clears throat> and the director of pharmacy had known actually a few of my preceptors. 
So, uh, you know, the word got around. They asked me to come in for an interview. And I guess they interviewed a few people. And then when they talked to me, uh, it was kind of crazy because it was a 100-mile drive. And then driving there took me like two hours. And then I guess after the interview, on my way back home, I got a call that said, hey, so can you start in two days? So, so that was really cool. Um, and that was like, uh, I, I guess like part of it was the networking aspect where I wouldn't have gotten this uh, kind of opportunity if I didn't make it aware to my professors and my preceptors that this is what I wanted to do. And then um, the other part with it was like getting an early start doing uh, all the projects you can that has that you know, technological aspect to it when you were a student. And then um, you know, that, that helps with uh, getting yourself known. So even though I didn't match for residency, I actually had that opportunity uh, right after I got licensed as a pharmacist and just two days after the interview, I started. So I was there for about five years. So the things I did there uh, were help their uh, implementation of Cerner. And once they implemented Cerner, then I worked on all the other aspects, which was get, getting their Pixis machines, uh, uh, working with the, the upgrades, like when they upgrade their Pixis machines, getting it validated with the Cerner system. Uh, doing other things like uh, the smart pump uh, infusion pump library, getting those uh, guardrails in, doing uh, certain types of rules for clinical decision support, um, managing uh, drug shortages and how it pertains to the barcode medication administration so that those barcodes are in correctly. Um, so a lot of those kind of things and a little bit of oncology. And after five years, and also another thing I wanted to say is this job was 100 miles away, and I didn't move to Ventura. I commuted because I wanted to work there and get that experience. But, you know, my home is still in Orange County, and I did commit to doing that. So after five years, I was able to gain enough experience that um, I applied for a job closer to home uh, over at uh, Children's Orange County. And after, you know, a a four or five month interview period, there were several parts of the interview, I got offered a position at uh, Children's and that's where I am today. And, um, and yeah, like I'm doing a lot of the same things, but there's also additional things uh, that I didn't do in Ventura. So it's kind of like, it also adds onto that idea of like lifelong learning because in the field of informatics, technology is always changing. So you're always gonna have to be on your feet and then learn as you go. Um, to make sure you're always up to date with all of that. So very true. Yes. Fantastic. Um, can you tell us a little bit about um, getting into social media and and how you started that journey? Oh yeah. So I did mention earlier that when I was researching all the information out there, it wasn't really there, or it was just very difficult to find. And um, and one of the things I did as you know, because I've been driving 100 miles back and forth, is listen to podcasts. So uh, when I was listening to podcasts, kind of ran out of podcasts I wanted to listen to. And I was thinking, hey, is there a podcast for pharmacy informatics? And I looked it up at the time. Uh, there wasn't anything like that. And, you know, everybody commutes. And I know that I find value in podcasts. And I'm just thinking, hey, maybe, maybe I could do a podcast on pharmacy informatics. And I know that I'm not an absolute expert or anything, but at least I can provide some of the stuff that I've learned over the years and some of the things that I've looked into uh, to the listeners who want to learn about informatics. And when I started, uh, I didn't really know if there was a market for it, if there was any kind of, you know, listener base at all, because I mean, there was no Pharmacy Informatics podcast. Why isn't there? There must be a reason, right? So uh, so I started it, and since starting it up until now, I've had over uh, 100,000 listens to the podcast, which to me is very, very surprising because it is a very niche field. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I guess there are a lot of people who do have an interest and want to learn about it, even if they're not in informatics. And I think one of the other things that I do on the podcast that might be beneficial is uh, interviewing different guests. And I have different guests that I reach out to who work in different fields of pharmacy technology, not just informatics, but, you know, artificial intelligence, analytics, and even on the consumer health informatics side, um, just talking about them as a pharmacist in their role, what do they do? And that kind of is a twofold thing for me. One, I'm learning more because 
I only know really the health system side. That's what my expertise is in. Um, so I'm learning more uh, from them. And then two is I'm now sharing that conversation to people who want to learn. And who knows, maybe someone that's listening may want to go into that particular field. So now they have, uh, they have heard someone that works in that field and they can contact that person if they wanted to. Um, so, so that's kind of like where the social media aspect of, uh, of, of my involvement with like pharmacy informatics is like bringing that awareness out there because it's something that I wish I had when I was a student. And, you know, hopefully that's been helpful to, uh, to people out there now. And, you know, actually there was a, I would say a success story. Uh, someone that I met at the conference, uh, she was a pharmacy informatics resident and she talked to me and she told me that the reason why she found out about that program was because she heard the residency interview coordinators as my guest. And then she listened to that whole, the whole podcast. And she asked me how long I've had it for. And I said, oh, since, you know, two years ago. And she's like, oh, wow. It felt like it's been much longer. So it's just really cool for me to hear like people have actually had successes to get to where they want to be from, you know, starting off listening to something that I created which, you know, I mean, I didn't have it at the time, but I'm glad that it's there now, so. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for all your contributions to the specialty practice of pharmacy informatics, your devotion over the last roughly 10 years um, in this specialty area. Uh, you've really contributed a lot, and uh, obviously it's been useful to a lot of people. So thank you for that, and uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, I'd like to have you back um, for another session, if you would, to talk about um, what you do at your job as a pharmacy informaticist. I think that would also be very interesting uh, for our viewers. So to our viewers, I'll say um, if this session was interesting for you, please like the video and subscribe to my channel, and I'll thank you for that. And in the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy, look after the health of others, I want to thank Dr. Dow for being with us today, and we will work on uh, future episodes, and I hope to see you then. Take care.